Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, PJ Norwood for today uh, of April 28th, uh, Fire Engineering Hump Day Hangout. And uh, man, I'm looking forward to just sitting back today and listening because I have three, man, amazing, amazing chief officers on with us today. Uh, my sidekick, Frank Ritchie, should be uh, joining us late. Uh, he should be here shortly to join in this great conversation. Uh, but Frank and I are changing up a little bit. We're going from the, the strategy and tactics and politics and tactics today to, uh, to join Chief Rubin and Chief Warner and let them speak about something that's very important to the fire service, um, a conference that's run on a five-year cycle. And they're going to inform us all about that today called Wing Spread. It's a, an educational opportunity that's helped forming the, the future, but also the past of, of the fire service. And uh, we're interested to give uh, Chief Warner and Chief Rubin the floor today uh, to discuss that with us, for those of you that are, that are unfamiliar with, with that conference. But before I get to them, uh, we must bring uh, the reason that we're all here, Chief Halton, giving us the ability and the opportunity to host this platform uh, once a month. Um, and I think it'd be great to hear a little uh, FDIC update, because normally we're we're still in that FDIC coma right now um, from previous years this time of year, but now we're still ramping up since we're going to be in, in Indianapolis in August this year. So chief uh, welcome. Hope you're well and uh, hope everything is good in the planning front. Yeah, no, doing great. Thank you. And, and uh, Peter, I'm going to break your rule two seconds in and I'm going to go low. I am not the reason why you're all here. That would probably have to do with Mr. and Mrs. Varner, past generation, Mr. And Mr. and Mrs. Norwood, past generation. That's probably the reason why you're here. But the reason why you're here today, maybe. So I got to see, I've still, I, still, I got to edit you, PJ, no matter what we do, I got to edit you. I, I need a lot of editing. It's no, okay. right. And, and, and I think that's kind of why we're all glad to be back on, back to FDIC, because mm -hmm. we, we miss that, right? We miss the nuance of the conversation inside the conversation, the, 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 the tiny little, I love you jabs, you know, the, you know what I mean? The stuff that the stuff that firefighters do that they can only do when we're together, because some of that gets lost in these electronic platforms. And, and no disrespect to electronic platforms, they've they've done a wonderful service for us, and then they they'll continue to. But the human condition was met meant for <laughs> other humans. We were designed to intermingle and be up close and personal, and give each other high fives, hugs, slap one another, you know, tickle have a good time. You know what I mean? We were, we were meant for face to face. We really were. And, and so our conference FDIC with, you know, 90, whew, I think this is our 97th year. 1928 was the first one. So I'm sorry, that'd be too, it's too far out. 94th rather. So, you know, if you go from 1928 to today, the only time we've ever missed war didn't stop it. The depression didn't stop it. The only thing that stopped it was COVID, which is fascinating, right? So it'll be an interesting retrospective to talk about that. That'll be a big topic of conversation, I'm sure. But beyond that, so much has happened in the fire service. We're going to have a great presentation from Brian Brush on his study that he just finished on rescues. And one of the things that came out of it is that 10 legitimate rescues he was able to document over a 90-day period, 10, at least 10, happen every day in America, which is fascinating. I think that's a much lower number than the actual but he was able to document 10, you know, and I don't mean helped people out of a building. I don't mean, you know, an evacuation, rescues, people who otherwise probably would have more than likely would have expired in that fire are alive today. So we've got stuff like that. We've got the metal oxide issue to talk about. We have got great new breaking information on PFOA and PFOSs. We've got tremendous new information coming out about some of the tactical approaches that we're continually looking at. And some people are doing some really innovative stuff with uh, uh, fire attack and, and the, the Chicago folks doing some really amazing stuff with high rise stuff. So we've got that just on the classroom and the workshop side alone. On the hands-on, you've got RIT Under Fire at the Illinois Fire Institute that we're gonna be doing, which is an incredible opportunity. They've got a one day special program put together for that. That's just off the charts, incredible. We've got the, um, the drilling at the speed of flashover people coming back in a, in a prop that's probably valued at over 75,000 bucks where you can really, re they can recreate just about everybody with Scott Kraut and some of the best instructors on the planet. We've got, you know, we've got everybody that, you know, who's, connected in some significant way to strategy and tactics in the fire service, just going to be ripping through this event. And plus it's, it's summer school. It's, so it's a unique chance to be in the only summer school session of FDIC ever. We've never had a summer school. So 
you know, and, and, and I know everyone on this call had to attend summer school because I know your backgrounds. So don't deny <laughs> it. So and there's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. We don't hire choir boys, you know, for the fire service or choir girls. We, we hire, we, we tend to attract people who are risk takers and risk takers tend to blur the lines sometimes and, and, and step over the lines, under the lines. And if you think about it, we create these brilliant, gorgeous SOPs and SOGs and, and we break every single one of them at every single fire in some nuanced, albeit important and necessary way. Systems don't fight fires, people fight fires and people make systems work. Systems don't make people work. So, which is the huge shift in how we look at our work, which has happened over the last, I don't know, six to eight years, right? 10 years. We've, we've moved away from the human factors and can try and control people to understanding that people are what control systems. So, you know, that's gonna, that conversation is gonna continue to evolve. So there's just some really neat stuff happening at FDIC. Registration's open. Hands-on training sites are being secured. You know, the, we've, got the, the, we've got some great breakthrough stuff happening in, in uh, the extrication field, which is going to be premiered there. It just, I mean, I could spend two and a half hours just listing the incredible brand new stuff that, that has happened in the last two years that we need to sit down, discuss, evaluate, put our hands on, see how it works in Bipperville and Bopperville and Kipperville and Copperville to quote Mike Mulligan and Marianne in the steam shovel story, which you all should be aware of. So talk about repurposing old material, right? A book from the 1950s. But remember, you guys remember Mike Mulligan and Marianne? So anyway, it, it's neat stuff. And, and I think that um, I'm really glad that we moved the dates up so I'll be able to be at Wingspread. And uh, I'll be able to be with my friends, Bruce and, and uh, Dennis again and talk about you know, our navel gazing expedition that we do there every five years now, much to my chagrin. I was the one dissenting vote, and I want to say that right off the top. It used to be every 10 years, and, and the motion was made to move to every five years, and, and uh, some of us had ulterior motives for that, which turned out to be just shy of what we wanted, but that's a whole other story. That's kind of a private story, but um, that's a neat event, so we're going to talk about that, but registration's open. We'd love to see you there. The fun runs on, the stair climbs on, um, the NFFF, we're going to be doing some kind of new, really cool stuff that we're doing with them. Um, the iWomen conference is on. They've got the, some fantastic speakers. That'll all be in the pre-con. Uh, the Comedy Night is on. The Fool's Bash is on. Uh, everything we normally do. Um, so the one thing I am requesting, just so you know right up front, I'm requesting no bunker gear at the stair climb. Um, I think this year we'll just climb in our workout gear. It's going to be August, for goodness sakes. Um, so we're going to take a lot of caution. I'm going to ask folks, just wear your, just wear your workout gear. If you want to wear a helmet, I'm cool with that. You know, if you want to wear your stair climb t-shirt, I'm cool with that, but I don't want people getting rehabdo or, you know, heat exhaustion um, at the climb. So please, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to enforce that as, as my request, my personal request that this year we don't, don't wear our structural gear. The men, the men who died that day, the 343 firefighters who died, as well as our, our law enforcement brothers and sisters who perished that day, we feel no less honored by your presence in, in your workout, comfortable workout gear. They're, 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 not, they're not expecting you to hurt yourself. They're, they're, they would be just as honored by you, just your, your presence and your participation. So that's, that's about it. Um, I'm sorry to, to ramble on. There's just so much to talk about when it comes to FDIC. And the, the largest and most, and, and most historic fire conference in the world. If you go to any other conference, you're you're a terrible human being and you should be ostracized from humanity. I'm just saying <laughs> that up front. No, no, it's it, it, it's the it's the it's the uh, I think it's the 14th or 16th commandment um, that when Moses, you know, he came down he dropped one. I saw the movie with Mel Brooks. It's an actual I have the 15, <laughs> the 10 commandments. I'm just but I'm just kidding. It's a joke, but not really. So anyway, just you know, Bobby, uh, I, IFE has been meeting with you for the last couple of years, and unfortunately, we had a legal requirement, so we had to go ahead and hold our uh, our meeting. We did that all online, uh, which, like you said, just isn't the same. But uh, so we're hoping that we'll be back with you next year. We'd love to see you. No, everybody's everybody's welcome at FDIC. So, without any further ado. We want to introduce our guest, PJ, or have them introduce themselves? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give a, a brief overview, but the only thing I want to add, FDIC 2022, don't forget, call for presentations oh, is open. Man, you know, you're doing my job for me, bro. 
hey, the call for presentations is open for 2022. And we are really excited. Uh, please get your proposals in. You don't have to send them to me for preview. Get them in. And I know a lot of you are saying, hey, Chief, would you review this? I can't. You just got to send it in and, and, and I'll review it after I get it. You know, we're going to put it through the usual process. Everybody goes through the same ringer, including me. Me, me and Bruno were, re were rejected three times. We saved the letters. We were turned down three, me and Bruno, while I was running the damn show. So, you know, it, it truly is, um, it truly is run by firefighters. And, and I rejected myself. I said, you guys are, you're, you're, you're doing too much stuff already. So it was fun, it was fun to write, dear Bobby, you're, you're rejected. Love Bobby. <laughs> and then I went on, I went on Facebook and I trashed myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Just want to make sure that I think and think uh, you know people forget that as we're getting ready to go attend FDIC that we should also be writing our 2022 pre, you know call for presentation. So I want to make sure. That and the key, just so everybody knows, the key to getting selected seriously, everybody, is if you if if we don't know who you are, you can have the greatest proposal in the world. But send us an article. Send us you know send us something that shows us that you're aware of the topic that you want to present on. Because if we don't, if, if one of the board members hasn't seen you teach or we don't know who you are, it's very difficult. But if you've written articles online at Firefighter Nation or Fire Engineering or GEMS or Fire Rescue or Fire Apparatus Emergency Equipment or any of the other publications that we, that we manage, then we know who you are. And it makes it a lot easier for us to understand your level of expertise and your level of understanding of your topic. But if we don't know who you are, it's very tough to get through the process. So it's a difficult competitive process and for one of those that sits on the board that helps review those courses. We only get about 1,200 to 1,600 submissions. So it's not a big deal, PJ. Quit whining. Okay. No whining, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you stand out. But that, thanks, Chief. I appreciate that. So let's, uh, let's move on. And uh, if I was to give an overview of uh, Chief Rubin and Chief Warner's uh, bio, we would be here till uh, three o'clock this afternoon. So I'm going to give just the, the quick highlights because these, these two gentlemen have done so much in the fire service for so many years. Um, I can't do justice on just reading a couple lines from a bio. So I'm just going to give a, a quick overview of the two of them and let them uh, introduce those of you that aren't familiar with this uh, great topic we're talking about today. So Chief Rubin, he's, um, he span, his history spans greater than 35 years in the fire service everywhere from a line firefighter, company officer, staff officer, command officer, chief of departments for several major U.S. cities. And, and you can look him up on Google and find all the great places that he's worked. And another unique fact about Chief Rubin, he's actually served as a, a city manager from 2001 to 2003. So not only has he been a fire chief uh, in multiple cities, he's also been a city manager. So he's been sitting on both sides of that table. So he's, he's a valuable resource to us in the fire service. Um, he's been president of the Virginia Fire Chiefs Association, several IAFC committees, uh, including the safety committee chair. Um, and the reason we're talking to him today, because he's the chair for the National Wing Spread, Wing Spread Strategic Planning Conference. He has several books, uh, Rules, Rules for Survival, uh, DC Fire, which is one, one of my favorites because they're all quick little short leadership stories of, of real life situations um, that, that the chief experienced when he was the chief of uh, Washington, D.C. Fire Department. Available uh, with Fire Engineering Books and Video. All from his, uh, his interview process all the way through. And then another leadership book, it's always about leadership, again, published by Fire Engineering uh, as well. And uh, Chief Warner, he began his fire service career in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, Chief, I'll, in all due respect, I'll leave that year out. We'll just say it was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> and he was promoted, promoted a deputy chief in 85. So that should tell you, if he was promoted a deputy chief in 85, he was appointed to the department uh, a, a few years prior to that. He's a professional fire service experience, all ranks through the position of fire chief. He served as fire chief in uh, Carleton, Texas, as well as Santa Rosa, California. Uh, which where he retired from, uh, but he still has remained very active in the fire service since then. And he is also a um, very important part of the, the Wing Spread Conference as, as the co-chair. So Chief and Chief, I'll start with Chief Rubin. Um, thank you for coming. It's an honor. Um, you know, I've, we've known each other for quite a few years now, and you know that I've, I've followed you around a little bit and kind of try to learn from you as much as I can. So I'm interested to hear what you have to tell us today. I tell you, uh, PJ Norwood, what a great person you and Bobby are as well. And quite frankly, we met at one of those FDIC networking events about 15 years ago. And it's been fun to watch your career and the great things that you're doing. So please keep it up. 
Um, for me, I'll, I'll be quick because I know Bruce has got a lot of comments to make, too, and I don't want to step over top of him. But in 1996, Chief Bernasini, rest his soul, asked me if I wouldn't mind uh, taking on the, the logistics and to support him to put on the wing spread conference uh, that hadn't been held in a while. It, we were coming up on that timeline. So in 1966, if I have my numbers right, I believe that would have been wing spread four. And at wing spread four, it was held in a place called Dothan, Alabama, uh, which was just outside of Atlanta. And then in 2006, the same request was made. And I had a chance to be at the Atlanta conference. Of course, I was chief there at the time. And then we were able to go back on campus in 2016 and Racine. Absolutely an amazing facility. Again, I think Bruce is going to bring out some of the details and specifics, but it's a Frank Lloyd Wright building. Probably don't have to go beyond that. All of his buildings are, are built close to water features, and it's just simply a spectacular place. While we were there, and with the only descending vote of 43 delegates being invited there by Johnson Foundation, Bobby Holton was the only person who said we shouldn't go back in five years. Chief Bernasini's vision was pretty clear to make it a very diverse group, and I think we've done that. Going back to the 1966 first wing spread, it was all male and all white. Simply put, there wasn't consideration for diversity. Also, Chief Brunacini expected some younger people to get involved to be able to carry the torch further. Um, and then finally, 10 years is way too long, no matter what Bobby Holton says. In that, things are moving at such a rapid pace. The internet and other considerations, how fast information travels. So I, I think all the tenants that the chief put forward were honored, were put into place. And we're so excited to have a group of 35 to be invited back by the Johnson Foundation. I think we had some great success in Wing Spread 6. And I believe Bruce, besides saying hello and me getting off my soapbox for a, lot, a while, is going to discuss some of those items. Bruce, you're up next. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. You know, Bobby, we could look at FDIC every five years, maybe. Oh, no, that would be far too long, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Bruce. Well, it was a yeah. good conversation. We're glad we had you guys on board with us today. And, you know, feel free to <laughs> come back anytime. <laughs> We're going dim. Sorry, Bobby, I couldn't help myself. Uh <laughs> <laughs> hey, never screw with the guy that owns the microphone, brother. Well, you know, it's like screwing with somebody who buys ink by the tank car load. And I do both. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. We're, and we're very appreciative of all the support that you've given us. Uh, over See, but that's the kind of stuff, seriously, you guys, that's the kind of stuff that we all miss. You know what I mean? And, and, and I guess on these calls and like with wing spread, the reason why you can't do 35 people in a Zoom call and get the same kind of result is that that stuff goes on in a nanosecond and it creates bonding and it creates, you know what I mean? There was a, we were, when Baggers used to be a small tight group years ago, Bruce, I don't even know if you were there then, but it was like, I was. I did Dennis, and we were like, there was like 12 or 13 of us. And Richie Gonzalez was there one day and we were making a joke about something and Richie got mad at me and he said something like, you know, ah, everything's a joke to you, Halt. And then I went to try to respond and Bruno stopped me right away. And he says, Richie, calm down. He goes, you can pretend to be a lot of things, but you can't pretend to be witty. That was funny. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and Richie was like, ah, I hate you. <laughs> you know, there's that, that, you can't, you know what, you know what I'm saying, guys? There's so much that takes place, and wing spread is a great example of that, that takes place at the breaks, at lunch, at the, in the evening. Uh, things that are contentious, that you come back from those conversations with them being resolved. And you just can't do that in a, a Zoom platform. Um, I, I attended a recertification class that was three days of Zoom. It was the worst class I ever took in my life. I, I got my recertification, but it, it was awful. It, I've, I did that class in person. It was a tremendous class. So, you know, and I'll, I'll tout FDIC one more time. Those in-person classes are phenomenal. And my opportunities as a fire chief to bring people to those over the years, every time they came back, they came back talking about what a great experience it was. 
because of the interactions that took place and the friendships that were formed, the contacts that were made. And again, you don't, you don't make those in a, in a Zoom conference or a Zoom presentation. Um, let's, let's, go, let's go back to, to wing spread, which is what we're supposed to be talking about today for, for just a minute. And the, the, the first conference was in 1966. As Dennis said, these were all old white guys. But they were significant old white guys. You, you'll rec I know Bobby will recognize some of these names. PJ, you may be a little young for this. Um, William Clark. Um, New York City Battalion Chief, who later went down to Florida. He did more live fire testing during his lifetime than any man alive. And, yeah. and Clark, uh, he wrote the uh, Principles and Practices book called The Big Blue Book, still available. And one of the best books ever written on structural firefighting. He was a... He was a he was a genius. I mean, Bill Clark was an absolute, there you go. That's the book, absolute genius. And, and that book has probably got more firefighting wisdom in it, you know, than most and, and um, absolute gentleman. But that gives you an idea of like right off the bat, there's a guy who, you know, contributions and the wing spread, the wing spread group. And, and I'll, just, I'll just make a quick disclaimer here. Irrespective of someone's immutable characteristics, it's the quality of their character and their contribution that matters. Not whether they're gay or black or white or green or blue. And, and I guess someday we're gonna find out who's flying these triangles and, and, and maybe we'll invite them. But the thing that gets you to wing spread is, is not your immutable characteristics, it's your contribution. And I, I wanna also add that at that time, while there wasn't a IFE USA branch, there was a group of IFE people in the US and Bill Clark was the chairman. And you should probably tell people what IFE, IFE is the Institute for Fire Protection Engineering, Engineers. Yeah. And Institution so, of Fire Engineers. Right, so, and it's kind and of an international It's group. It's a UK based organization. Uh, it's an international organization with branches across the world. Right. And, principally in Commonwealth countries. It, it originated in the UK and it, it spread to Commonwealth countries. And so, you know, some of us uh, eliminated that Commonwealth part very early on in life. I, I, frequently I think you're going to, and I didn't mean to interrupt with Bill Clark, but what a great guy. I think you're going to say Warren Isman was next, right? Uh, nope, not, not in 1966. Mm, um, John O'Hagan, FDNY. Chief of FDNY. Uh, Henry Smith. From Texas, yeah. um, Keith Klinger, L.A. City, yeah. um, Keith Royer. When we talk about education, fire service education, you go back and look at at, at Keith Royer, Royer at Nelson, Iowa State, Iowa State University, Fire Formula, yeah. um, David Gratz. Um, oh, yeah. These are the people that were, were, were there. And when you look at some of the things that they talked about in 1966, when they talked about the need for education for chief officers, the need for progressive education all the way through your fire service career. I mean, the NFA wasn't even thought of. America Burning hadn't been published. Um, we, we are, they're, they're talking about things that led to these, that led to the formation of the U.S. Fire Administration, that, that led to a higher level of, of, of recognition. Um, I, I liked one of them, the public is complacent towards the rising trend of life and property lost by fire. Well, we're still struggling with that, but we have made an awful lot of progress along the way. If when we look at, at, when you take those numbers that they were in 66 and you extrapolate those out to what they would be today without the interventions, it, it would be horrific. You talked about the, the, the grabs that are, being, that are being made across the country from the, the study that was just done. And, you know, we, they also recognized and represented that a tremendous amount of our fire service, actually the, the, the huge amount of our numbers are the volunteer fire service, the volunteer and combination fire service. And, and our, our paid departments certainly are the largest departments. 
I did my entire career in, in the paid fire service. But when you look at, at the, what the volunteers are doing across this country today, when they, when they looked at it in 1966, when they looked at the trends that were going on, it, it's, it's really important to us. Many places across, across the United States wouldn't have any fire protection at all if it weren't, weren't for the volunteer fire service. The volunteers actually greatly outnumber the paid and career guys, a in absolutely. guys and gals in this country. Um, and, and many, if not everybody on this call, I'm not sure, but I, I started off as a volunteer. I still volunteer out here in Collinsville, Oklahoma. Um, and I know most of my union brothers and sisters were two hatters. And I think that that policy is greatly relaxing now um, with the new administration about that activity. I'm not, I don't want to speak for the union, but I think that more and more we're realizing that some communities just can't afford to have as, as large a cadre as they would like of paid firefighters. So that's one of the things we'll be discussing at Wing Spread probably this year, you know, recruitment and retention. When I would go to a Sonoma County Chiefs meeting in Santa Rosa, I had three, three of my company and chief officers that were fire chiefs in volunteer departments that sat across the table from me in the county chiefs meetings. Uh, overall, over a third of our department were active volunteers and made it made a huge difference. Um, you, you look at, at FDNY, at, at how many of those guys volunteer in their, their communities. Huge. John, John Norman, John Salka, you know, Bobby Absolutely. Morris, you, you name the legend, they're volunteering somewhere. Absolutely. You know, another thing they said in 1966, which was interesting, is unprecedented demands are being imposed on the fire service by rapid social and technological change. <laughs> Uh, that's all. Can I say, can I say, can I, no shit? Can I say that on the radio? Yeah, no, this is no, no shit. <laughs> Still happening. Um, keep keeping up with technology today. I think every conference, every place I, I talk to anybody about, they talk about trying to keep up with the social changes with the, with the technology changes that are, that are hitting us constantly. So there was a lot of forethought that went in to what what they what they were looking at. Uh, I mentioned the educational can I, can requirements. I on the on the background that you're talking about, Bruce. I, I think if you were to go back to 1966, I can speak volumes about my fire department. Our first fire chief that had a uh, high school diploma occurred in 1973. Uh, uh, Burton uh, Johnson was that member. Prior to that, the chief that preceded him uh, had a GED. His name was uh, Galata, Frank Galata, and I could go on. So even though it's, a, it's an easy peasy, no big deal, it clearly is at that time huge, huge information. And I, I do believe that that has been the, the, the bellwether, the way that, that uh, wing spread, the attendance, the Johnson Foundation has been able to couch information that today, well, how many ever years later, 55, it's no kidding. But back then it was absolutely leading or bleeding edge. Would you agree? Oh yeah, no, abs absolutely. And I, and so uh, guys, just so you know, uh, Peter is monitoring Facebook and those of you who are uh, on that platform still, despite your better judgment, uh, are sending in questions. And so um, we have a question from Jeannie Shelley and she asks, can't wait to hear about how the volunteer fire systems fit into the wing spread program. Well, Jeannie, they, they fit in, the wing spread is about the fire service. It's not about career or volunteer. It's about the entire dynamically complex uh, institution we call the fire service. And, and that includes fire brigades, that includes wildland, it includes every aspect of, of, of how we conduct fire protection in America is discussed at wing spread. And, and um, it, the, the, the mechanism by which you engage is irrespective of, uh, well, of, of, of its intent, right? So in other words, Volunteers are just as important as the brigade people, as the maritime people, as the, as the you know, as the um, 
corporate people even. We talk about you know, uh, industrial fire protection, which is largely handled by in-house folks. So it's about fire protection. It's about the art and science of firefighting as it stands at that moment in time, right? And that was Chief B's point. He and, and Dennis's point was, you know, and, and about doing it every five years. And my point was, is that every generation has felt it. To, to Bruce's point, 66, the very first one, how can we keep up with this tremendous pace, right? So every generation has had that entrepreneur that this is the fastest moving and things have never moved as fast. But I guarantee you in five or 10 years, 10 or 20 years, it'll be moving faster because um, it, it just seems to be the way it's going since the dawn of man. And Chief Holden, if I can add to Janine's response, in uh, the last wing spread, six, a group of, of really leading edge volunteer fire chiefs led by uh, uh, PhD Bill Genoway asked to come together in the evenings. I don't know whether you recall this or not, yeah. but they did a white paper on top of all the significant findings that I know Bruce is going to be on top of shortly. And it was designed for volunteers to speak to some of the specific issues You've mentioned recruitment, retention, the ability to be able to fund a volunteer system, especially in rural America. All the items that you covered would be part of the response to Janine. So I hope that makes sense. Bruce may want to add something as well. But we did pay special attention and, uh, again, allowed everybody to be represented. And I think the Wing Spread 7 is even going to be a larger group. Really ac across the fire service, and it's it's trying to bring that together, keep it small enough to be uh, effective, and at the same time bring all of those views to together, and and have a discussion about what we're going to need to look at. Um, it used to be in the next ten years. Now, what do we need to look at over the next five years? And that's that's truly a challenge, you know. As I, I one of the things I did is I flipped flipped through and looked at the uh, the statements. Not not going into all the de details, but in 1976, the fire service should approach the concept of regionalization without bias. <laughs> We're still not there, Bruce. We're just still not good, there. Good, We're good still luck. Not there. And of course, I, I, I live in Goodyear, Arizona nowadays, which is part of the Valley Consortium uh, under a single dispatch system. They, they still are autonomous fire departments, but we operate without boundaries and we, we cover the valley. Um, I, I had the benefit of being in charge of communications when we had six jurisdictions in that. And there are, I believe, up to 30 today jurisdictions that are dispatched by the regional dispatch system. And there's some rules to, to join and things that you have to do to operate the same. You have operational guidelines so that everybody's operating on the same page. That doesn't mean that there, there aren't any differences. It, it means that we, we are able to operate in the same manner. You have a command system that works across the entire system. And there are those all over the country. There, there are consolidations that have taken place all over the country. There's consolidations that didn't work out so well and they got a divorce. But when you look See, at- what the, year would the Valley of the Sun system have started? What year would that have been, Bruce? when the six came together about? Uh, that would have been about uh, 70, 78, rough, roughly. So perhaps that, perhaps that was one of the successes out of Wing Spread 2, correct? C certainly, it, cer certainly it was. And, and I will tell you that Chief Brunacini read the 66 report and he was determined to be a part of wing spread. And as is, 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 is you've engine, mentioned, Dennis, earlier, his involvement in seeing that wing spread didn't die because there, there seemed to be, it seemed to be going away. But he was at the 76 conference. And he, he went as a guest. He wasn't listed. He's not listed on the, on, on the list of people on there. But he was determined that that was valuable to the fire service, that it was something that should live forward. 
and he asked you to be a, the logistical host for the for the next one that took place. And uh, through Chief, I've got to ask: Did you have to drive him in that Mash Rambler or not? Yeah. <laughs> to, to Wisconsin. <laughs> so, and I think I think one of the things that's important to remember is that when we get to wing spread, we take constructs like this. In other words, there's a construct of of um, consolidation, as Dennis just mentioned, in some of the places where they've actually made a formal, and then regionalization. Regionalization was the fundamental block behind my concept of blue card that I later, you know, gave to Chief Brunacini and his sons to build their their business plan from. But when I did the original blue card stuff, blue card was predicated on regionalizing manpower. So when I when I taught blue card long before the Brunacinis were doing it, about eight or ten years before, it was to help the Dallas Metro folks and the and I actually did it in Orlando, Florida, in Orange County. And the idea was just to, to, to create a manpower pool where you could actually hire people from other agencies, create in advance the ability to hire back a lieutenant or a captain or a firefighter. And that was the original idea behind Blue Card. Alan and Nick and John put a um, structure to it, if you will, a curricula in order to teach that. And it's kind of like the lost principle behind the, the original Blue Card idea. But we talked to Alan and I had a great conversation about that at the last Blue Card and uh, on one of our subgroups. And, and I'm, I'm gonna bring that back this year. In other words, regionalization can be done without losing identity. In other words, it, manpower tends to be the real issue. It's not, it's not generally apparatus, although sometimes there is a need for equipment. But generally speaking, when people get jammed up, it's about manpower. And, and the legalistic stuff that got in the way was what Blue Card tried to create a gateway through, right? Create a, create a workaround for. And so you know, we're gonna bring that conversation back. So we got a couple of other uh, um, questions and so I think this would be best for you, uh, Chief Rubin, and getting involved in wing spread. And we talked a little bit about it. It, it is truly a meritocracy of, of invitation. So um, could you address that a little bit as to how you look at the folks that you invite? Absolutely. What we try to do is to have a widely diverse group so that pretty much every section, sector, component of our business has a seat at the table whether it's IAFF, IAFC, uh, whether it's the uh, uh, collective group of uh, magazine editors, which of course you represent and you do it so incredibly well, especially when you have on your Jay Leno shirt, because I know it's car day today, I'll just mention that to our viewers. So be patient. I, I think you mentioned something that's so critically important. Be of good character and also be a good contributor. If you're a person who has a crummy character, you're probably never going to get an invite. It's just the way it is, behave. But just as important to be a contributor, and especially in such a way, again, I'm going to hitchhike off of what you described for the FDIC presentations as a person puts in the presentation. Please let us know what your accomplishments have been. And as that accomplishment list gets to a, to a, a pretty good point, Johnson Foundation will uh, reach down, approve, and allow you to come, come along. We're going to be down about 10 people from the last time we met. Um, and that's sad. And I know there's probably folks that are disappointed that they're not going to be there. But let me just say, remember COVID. And with the COVID rules, the idea will be we will be masked up. And when we're inside, there'll be six feet between each person, as you might remember, that, that uh, adjoining room that we had to spill over in, that's probably not going to happen this year. So the idea will be to protect the facility, the people, uh, people's health, uh, the community, et cetera. So I apologize. It's 35 people. That's it. We've tried to come up with mechanisms so people can give us good ideas. Well, the one thing that I think we walk out of there with is literally, literally hundreds of good ideas. It's very tough to catalog. It's very tough to get the background information. And then what the strategic plan and the action plan moving forward will be, that's the process that we've been using uh, for the past couple of events. So please read the, the uh, contents. I think Bruce is going to go over some of those and our accomplishments from, from the last term. Uh, please be a, a, a good steward uh, of, of your name and character. Uh, also couple that fact with 
um, be a contributor and time will tell. You will get that opportunity as time moves on, I hope. Chief, once those documents are created, that strategic plan and the operations going forward, how is that communicated to the fire service at large from that point? I, I would say, and I think Bruce would agree, we're probably a best kept secret, which is a shame in a way. There has always been a printed document and we will print a document this year, even though we have to raise our own funds. Uh, when we print it, there'll be somewhere between 7,500 to 10,000 copies. And you saw Bruce hold up uh, his wing spread one. They become very valuable over time. We'll be mailing out copies to all of the various fire service entities as we have done in EMS entities in the past. This time, and again, through Bruce's efforts, Congress will have the 235 reps, the 100 senators and other folks will have copies delivered to them. And then we go really hog wild with the electronic media, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, et cetera, to get that information out so that it's downloadable. I wish we could afford a million, 200,000 copies to cover all of our colleagues coast to coast, but that's an impossibility. However, everyone can tap into the electronic version and all are available. And again, um, I'm, I'm the electronic nitwit I think Bruce is going to, to be able to help us how to get those immediately. But I'm going to add one more thing. The other vision of Chief Brunacini, and boy, when Johnson Wax heard about it, uh, Johnson Foundation, it's, it's owned by or was owned by Johnson Wax. It's a, it's a separate group. So let me refer to the foundation is we're going to have an international guest for the first time in history. A senior chief officer from Canada will be with us. And the idea is to start something similar to this to our great northern neighbors to the north. Now, talk about COVID rules. It's still questionable whether uh, Ken McMullen will be able to travel. He's the fire chief, the reigning fire chief of the year uh, in, in uh, Red Deer, uh, fire chief for the nation, but he works in Red Deer, Alberta. And if he can be with us, I think the impact is going to be tremendous. And again, just another uh, accolade to Chief Brunacini, rest his soul, as this process moves forward. Um, again, I, I think Bruce probably has some information to opine on this topic as well. Well, you know, Dennis, as we've, as we've looked at the people coming together, for the very first time, we'll have a representative of the Federal Fire Service that's going to be with us. Um, I, have, uh, I have put into chat where you can get copies of everything from Wing Spread 1 through Wing Spread 6. Uh, that's Peter, through the Peter put that up online. Heritage Peter, Center. Peter put that on a link on the, on this link also, so people will be able to get to it from from this page. And and we also the last wing spread we we did put them up on fire engineering digitally last time. And yes, I believe, yes, I, be, I believe our compatriots at the other sites did as well. And uh, we will once once we have the report finished, we'll be t we'll be talking to you about getting the links up to to do that again. Um, and that, that we're, we're looking at how we get that word out better. And it's, it's interesting to talk to people that have read all of the reports that are youngsters in our, in our service. And you, you, you get involved in a conversation and you mentioned wing spread. Um, I've, I've had occasion to ask how many people have read, read wing spread. And I'm always pleasantly surprised at there's always at least a few youngsters in the room that have in fact read it and they can talk about it and, and they recognize the significance that it's had to the fire service over, over the years. Um, the, the last report gave us an opportunity. Uh, Bobby, you, you, were, you were there, you were very actively involved. Uh, in the in the converse, in the conversations that took place uh, in the in the breakout rooms um, in in your dissent about going to every five five years, but that group of people, and uh, and I'll ask you to jump in on this, represented the diversity of opinions across the fire service, and recognized the need to have a consensus when we walked away from it. Right, and consensus is not everybody agreed. 
In other words, it's very important to understand that. In other words, and that's why I was so vocal and, and Chief Bernicini loved me for it, for saying no to every five years, because no one ever agrees on everything. And people can put a gun to your head or make you feel bad on social media to make you act like you think something. But Solzhenitsyn taught us in, in back in the 60s when the progressive movement was fostering its first move at postmodernism in the, in the current era, you know, everyone had to agree on everything. No, you know, the reason I dissented was because I know I was not alone. And, and there were probably a cadre of 20 or 30 other people who just didn't want to say anything, or maybe 10 or 15, who knows, but they just didn't want to say anything. It's the get along to go along. And that's not what consensus means. Consensus means is that we found some common ground where to the best of our abilities, we can all endorse what we're saying. Doesn't mean that everybody believes every word of it is it's, it's canonical or, you know, it's the, it's the, it's, it's the, it, it, you know, it, it has uh, some, you know, inalienable truths to it. What it means is that to the best of our abilities, we were able to come to some kind of agreement on the wording or the thought process or the constructs. So be very, very, I'm always very, very, I'm very proud of the fact that I did that. And, 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 and so is Chief B because, you know, there's a modern day, you know, um, uh, thought process that, you know, everybody has to agree on something. And, and no, we don't. No, we don't. Thomas Jefferson said it best. He said, a man's ideology, a man's religion, or, or a man's uh, politics is no reason for me not to be his friend or to get along with him or to, or to support what he might support. In other words, so it's, 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 it's a fascinating, you know, um, fence to walk, right? So if you, if you're, if you're, and one of the other things we had, a, we have a question from one of the other people asked about why we don't just put this out on Zoom so everybody can see the presentations. When, when you wanna have these real conversations, we don't record things just like we don't record things at baggers. We don't record things at, at wing spread so that people can be honest and people can say things that may not be in the mainstream and, and may be somewhat controversial. But the minute you take away that ability for people to freely communicate, I mean, real free speech, Wing spread has real free speech, ergo my vote against, you know, and, and the minute you take that away, no reason to have a conference. Might as well just put four, you know, pompous, arrogant fools in a room and let them write a paper, you know, which happens routinely. Wing spread is not that. You, you, wing spread is a lot of people contributing a lot of thought to a lot of really important topics. And to, and to Dennis's point, thousands of things get discussed. And out of that, we'll find maybe a group of champions, four or five, right, Bruce, that really pick up a big topic or a big thought and they'll go further with it and they'll publish a white paper like, 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 a, a, like Genoway did representing the volunteers. And hopefully those are the voices that we're bringing this time. Again, people that are willing to say things that may not be popular now. Re re remember that you know, free speech isn't the speech you wanna hear. Free speech is most often the speech you don't wanna hear. So this isn't a rainbows and lollipops conference where everything's great. We, we talk about our warts and our underbelly. And that's one of the reasons why we do, I, I'm vehemently opposed to filming the presentations because especially at a place like Wingspread, where we're looking for what we don't know, right? Everybody comes there knowing what they know. I wanna hear what I don't know. I, I remember one thing that was said um, by a, a physician. Remember at the beginning of Wingspread last year? And he said, thank God for firefighter cancer. He said, I'm so happy that more firefighters are dying from cancer. And everybody sat there like, what the hell is he talking about, right? We were, we were shocked I mean, for, for a brief second. And then he explained, because that means that fewer firefighters are dying from obesity and smoking. Fewer firefighters are getting killed by you know, things that are controllable. He said, now we need to focus on controlling cancer, right? And cancer is a later stage death. And, and albeit with my deepest respect to my good friend, Trevor, who passed away, he was 40 years old. He passed away on Sunday, Trevor Heather Torsten. He was a uh, Champaign, Illinois firefighter. He died of cancer. Uh, he was also at the Granite Mountain Fire Department. He was part of the Muddy River Fools. And um, my thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends and his organizations and my good friend, Gary Ludwig and, and um, everybody out there, Billy Laguerre, who are honoring Trevor this week. Um, so I, I wish I could be there with you, but not to discount cancer. Uh, you know, and, and it's incredibly devastating impact. But that was his opening statement, right? And, and if we were recording it, 
He may be hesitant to say that because some knucklehead could pull out that five minute, five second clip, put it up online and destroy his career. And people do that. There are bad actors out there, mostly on Twitter and Facebook. And, and, and just had to throw that in there, but just to be a wise guy. But um, you know what I'm saying, right? They take, they take something completely out of context and it, it can destroy someone's career, ruin their reputation, and it, 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 it inhibits real conversation. So, uh, you know, if that ever came up for a vote, hey, let's, you know, zoom this out to the world, I, I again, will proudly stand up and say no. Some conversations are best left between people without electronic recording devices and, and, and when we're trying to think and think critically. So, and wing spread to Dennis's point, man, even sitting on the bus, you know, um, uh, you know, we, we, some of the best conversations, right? We're going to those um, uh, restaurants there. Uh, and one of them was really a cool place that Dennis took us to um, it, it, out, outside of Racine. And it's right on the water. Uh, it was marvelous, marvelous place. But, you know, even on the bus, the conversation, it, it's like FDIC. It's like the other conferences. I'm just making fun of the other people. It's like when you go to Fire Expo or any <clears> of the <throat> conferences that are out there, you know, it, it's those moments when you get to, you know, the, uh, Romanov talked about the Romanov staircase deal, right? He gets insulted, uh, the, the Russian writer gets insulted on the staircase and then uh, Brothers Romanov. And then, you know, five minutes later, he thinks of the witty reply he wish he had said, you know what I mean? And, and it's called the staircase moment. Well, you have those staircase moments on the bus where you think, oh man, what about, you know, and you throw it out to somebody and somebody from the back of the bus yells out, hey, and, and this, you know, and and so that's the neat thing about bringing together 35 people who, you know, live, eat, breathe the fire service and, and, and wing spread is that. And, 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 and it's a neat, neat opportunity because, you know, you, you get to go someplace where really, really smart people go and, and, and do this, you know, routinely. And so it's kind of a neat construct. I still think it should only be every 10 years, but we can revisit that. I'm, I'm going to raise that up for a vote just for fun, just to be a wise guy. <laughs> Just me. Let me let me just let me you just know, add another thought to what Bobby had to say because I think it's so important. I'm I'm looking at the uh, seven um, uh, agenda, and it talks about in 1959. That's when the whole process gets started with with Johnson Foundation, and they say the free exchange of constructive and purposeful ideas is what this entire experience and process is about. And it goes on to add a little bit more about they're, they're not a special place, but they're a great place to make that happen. So in other words, if we weren't doing the things that's been discussed, if we were not part and in, in having open and frank and realistic and honest discussions, I don't think we would ever get another invitation back. I think we've met all that is expected of us with the Johnson Foundation and a little bit more. In fact, when we asked to come back in five years, the answer was a resounding, heck yeah. It, you know, Bobby, you, you mentioned it very well, and I, I hope I'll drive uh, some of our listeners to, to look this up further, is baggers and the wing spread conferences have essentially been held under Chatham House rules. And what that is, is that you are free to reveal the ideas. You just can't, without permission, attribute them to the individuals that were involved. You can't go out and say, well, Bobby Halton said, and we've, we've operated baggers that way for as long as I can remember being involved with baggers, first logis logistically later on as a member and now as the co-chair with Chief Jones, um, is that's the principle under which we operated. And you know, I, I remember when you used to come come hang out in Phoenix uh, at a time when you uh, when you worked in some place in New Mexico. Um, yeah, and, uh, I, 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 I worked recall, I worked part I worked part time in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> mostly, were, mostly during Rogers suspension, and, mostly during suspensions, and uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But by by virtue of the best thing you can do to a bad principle. leader is confront them. And, and the best thing you can possibly hope for in your career is to suffer bad leadership. <laughs> it, cer it certainly builds character. <laughs> oh, it, 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 absolutely. I'm, you know, still, I, I'm still here. 
I, I did I did the first part of my career under under bad leadership. And then Chief Brunacini became the chief of the Phoenix Fire Department. And I did the rest of my career in Phoenix under extraordinarily good leadership, um, which in some ways didn't prepare me for some of the things that I encountered moving moving out as a fire chief. Well, but you know, it's a, and that's something else that we talk about at um, Wingspread is styles, right, Dennis? I remember we had a conversation about leadership styles. And what worked for Chief Brunacini in Phoenix may not have worked for Chief Stapleton in Boston, right? And, 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 and God bless Leo Stapleton. He passed away two days ago. One of probably one of the most important members of my generation uh, in the fire service. You know, Leo was the original uh, SCBA person. Leo was, Leo was the guy leading the charge on SCBAs. That, that was Leo Stapleton. And he took, he took as much heat from that as I did for your supporting transitional attack as an article, just as an article. And, and, and then I ran away like the coward that I am. But the, <laughs> the, the, but the importance of what Leo contributed and, 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 and folks like that. But we look at that now and we think, well, how could anybody have been against SCBAs? I, I've got the magazines and the articles to show you. And, and it was, it was, he was a voice in the wilderness when he first was pushing SCBAs in every fire. He really was. And, and so that's the kind of thing, you know, that's the kind of thing that we do at Wingspread. And those are the kind of ideas that come out of places like Wingspread. Like, you know, you know, we imagine a future and, 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 we, and we also deal in, in, in carpe diem. Where are we right now? You know what I mean? So... Uh, and and we do we do very little blaming. Blaming solves nothing. You can blame or you can learn, but you can't do both. So you know it, there's very little blaming that goes on at Wingspread, and a lot of as Dennis said, constructive. And, and every now and then, you know, somebody throws something out there, and we all are kind of like, hey, that's great. And then somebody goes, that's nuts, and we all go. Oh yeah, that's nuts. Okay, and we you know we move merrily along, right? I mean, it's not like every idea that comes up is a you know. It, it, I think it was uh, someone who once said it was just an idea. Nobody said it was a good one. You know what I mean? And so, <laughs> you know, it's a, but we do that. There's a lot of spaghetti that gets thrown on the wall, and and, and that's what's so cool. And and that's why I'm so glad that you know, FDIC day changed, which which allows me to to reengage because for a while there I thought I wasn't going to be able to be there, but. I'm excited and, and the chance, I'm trying to think of who it was it, um, who said, um, I don't think it was, it wasn't Seneca, I apologize. But a great philosopher said that we don't create our friends by asking favors of them. We create our friends by doing favors for them. And the best thing we can share with anyone is our minds and our hearts and our souls in an honest and open way. And, you know, Bruce went right to Chatham House Rules, which might as well be the marquee, de, you know, marquee, de, remember the old boxing? Now we got MMA, cage fighting. So all well, that's gone by the wayside. But, you know, uh, you know, it really is the free exchange of ideas. And, and, and one of the things we do ask people to do is to leave your feelings at the door. You know what I mean? Try to, try to be open. You know what I mean? Nowadays, we filter everything to us through this you know, emotional, how can I respond to this emotionally? How can I find a way to be upset? I don't, don't be upset. If, 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 you, if you're one of those people who tries to find ways to be upset, you'd hate wing spread because you'll just be pissed off the whole time. Because right, <laughs> right off the bat, I'm going to say something to, 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 to light your fuse, you know, or, or the good doctor. And I believe it, was, it wasn't Dr. Kales. Who's the doctor I'm trying to remember who opened us up last year? Augustine. Dr. Oh, Dr. Augustine, Jimmy Dr. Augustine. Augustine. Jimmy Augustine. Sorry, Jimmy, I forgot your first. And, and what a brilliant, lovely, incredible talent, right? I mean, unbelievable. And uh, Jim, Jim is going to join us again. He's been doing a, a lot, of, lot of work with, uh, with, with CDC. He's been doing a lot of work with the pandemic. He, we have a presentation he's going to do is preparing for the next pandemic. Um, and uh, that's, that's not as it seems by the time we go through that, we'll be talking about what that means to, to fire and emergency services. Well, guys, you know, I, I really appreciate the, the information today. Um, what would your avenue be for those listening to that want to learn more 
about this conference and more about the reports and papers that have come out? Is there one specific area? I know Chief Fallon, you mentioned that uh, fire engineering has published those papers in the past. Um, maybe we can put a link up in that into the- uh... Peter, Peter's already on it. There's a, the, we have the Heritage Foundation, um, which is a wonderful group. Uh, they have the comp, cop, copies there of all the years. Bruce put that up. Peter is going to put that to this link. So if you want to look at the reports. So th this year's conference is in August. Can I, of can I add one more? Yeah, yeah go, so, no, no hard stop. Go ahead, Dennis. No hard stop. With this conference in August of 2021, if you would include in your comments on when the fire service should expect the 2021 paper to be published. I, I can there tell you what our goal. Podcast out there. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chief. I, I can tell you that our goal is by the end of the year. Okay. That, that we will that we will we will have it in uh, in final final editing format and and have it printed by the end of the year is is our is our goal and uh, Dennis and I are 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 hard committed to that um, certainly you don't know what life's going to bring that might that might cause a, a delay but that that's a hard goal for us is to have that printed and out by the end of the year and so, our hard promise to you from fire engineering uh, Dennis and Bruce uh, is that. We'll provide this platform to you uh, to do a special presentation on the wing spread report where maybe you might want to bring, you know, five or six of the folks who picked key topics that maybe want to do white papers or contributed, you know, some significant thought process or idea. And we'll hold an extended two or three hour, you know, report from wing spread kind of thing. However, okay. however much time we think people can, can digest, you know, that much. But the problem with trying to do wing spread in an hour is it's, it's, it's the fire service, right? And we don't want to diminish the importance of anybody or, or what they're talking about, whether it's, you know, one of the things fascinatingly that I'm going to bring to wing spread is I'm looking for someone, this bright time to ask it. Someone came to me, it was Bill Gustin actually, who had someone ask him, what would we do in one of these um, Amazon or you uh, places where it's electronically loading these pallets with these robots should there be an event, a fire, you know, hazmat spill, whatever, right? And we respond, and these things are automated, right? They're on a, they're on a program. How do we manage that, right? That's a conversation for wing spread. That well, I don't have the answer to that right now, uh, and, and I'd love to find somebody who's either dealt with one or is dealing with one or has some ideas about dealing with one, right? I mean, Chief uh, Sh Sean DeCrane um, and Sean Gray are currently working on a program on that through UL. They're looking at um, not necessarily Amazon, but they're looking at those uh, the robots, auto, the robot right. that deliver the cars. They're right. actually those car depots. And that's what they're working on a project right now, studying and looking at that for, for us. But I think that would be a great topic for Wingspring to get 35 this year, only 35 other, other opinions on well, that also. I had the privilege to walk through an Amazon facility one time they were right here. It's not far from us. So they invited several fire folks to come take a look at it. It's phenomenal. And, and those machines move with purpose. Now, I don't know what the safety stuff is built into them, you know, how they maybe disable at an emergency, but we need to know. And what was fascinating was we asked the question, the fire folks that I was with and the folks running the place were like, we'd have to get back to you on that. <laughs> And also globally, that is an issue. I mean, when, right. when we, we're looking at battery issues, fire services around the world are looking at battery issues. Right. Lithium Two firefighters story. just died in Beijing right. in a, in a battery company. The so, fire, the fire in Texas with the with the Tesla that went for three hours and thirty thousand gallons of water, and that's one car. Well, ex exactly, exactly. It, you know, they had to keep cooling because if they didn't keep cooling, it reignited on them, which is typical of that type of battery technology when you've got a, when you've got a runaway. UL has done some great programs on that. And that's wing spread, right? So that's, you know, that's on the bus ride. You know, that's the, that's the, that's when somebody says, well, I got a kid that, you know, worked at wherever. And the next thing you know, th there's the paper, right, Dennis? That's the magic. And it's the same thing at FDIC. Yeah, no. and, you know, it's, a, it's the same thing at FDIC. It's the same thing with the magazine and the website. You know, the, the fire service, but the nice thing about the fire service is we've never lived in a world where people who live in fear and scarcity do well. The only people who do well are the people who live in abundance and they're willing to give away everything they have because they know that the, the more you hoard, the less you have. 
You know, the only way to the only way to get more is to give more. The only way to you know the only way to to own anything is to be able to give it away. You know what I mean? Not, of course, not a red '65 Mustang A code. I was going to ask that else. question. <laughs> 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 yeah. Let's not get let's not get carried away. But you know what I mean? It's, with ideas, the only way to own an idea is to be able to share it. If you have an idea and you're not willing to share it, you don't have an idea. You know, you, you've you've got a fantasy. You know, and 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 that's a that's a whole other issue. So you know, I, I hope that people have gotten a better idea about wing spread is it's a kind of a neat thing. Please go to the link and look at the papers that Bruce has been kind enough to share with us. Um, you know, if you have, you know, further questions about it, please feel free to reach out to Bruce or, or Dennis and, and ask the question. Um, they're, they're, they're great guys. They're very busy. So it might take a while for them to get back to you. Um, but they've been, we've known each other for longer than I care to say publicly. Um, and, and Bruce and I have stopped dyeing our hair, <clears throat> Dennis. And um, just kidding. Just... <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Leno. <laughs> the, the last but, thing. But, uh, but if I could take, if I could take one last moment of privilege, because it has been a, it has been a privilege to know you both. Um, you know, we we often forget to say how much we love and care about folks while they're alive, and. You know, you go to funerals and you hear about how great guys are, but these are a couple of great guys and PJ, you too. And Frank, you know, he can't be here with us now, but we have all been so blessed to be uh, allowed to have these relationships that we have with one another. And, and we do them despite the fact that there's many, many things that we disagree on and, and, and that's okay. Matter of fact, that's important to us that we honor and respect our differences as well as our commonalities. And, um, and I've always loved that about both of you. You know, you're, you're, you're great, all three of you, you're great guys and you're wonderful people. And, and that's the whole fire service. Don't forget that. If you're out there on Facebook listening now and, and, and you know, you're mad at somebody or over some trivial, silly thing that five years from now won't make a bit of difference. You won't remember, you, you know, you don't even remember what the, why you don't like the person sometimes or, or what you were mad about, right? Uh, you know, remember the big fight we had two years ago? And the other guy goes, no, <laughs> you're right. Oh, okay. Me either. You know, I mean, it, it, so remember that. Right. And, and I think that's so important uh, in this day of hysteria, just hysteria. I mean, uh, and don't feed into the hysteria. You know, if, if people are being hysterical about something that's absolutely disingenuous, call them on it, stand up and say, no, you're being childish, grow up, you know, uh, uh, put on, you know, grow up. Hysteria never solved anything. And feeding into it is absolutely the worst thing you can do. You know, someone's making wild, you know, claims of some kind of victimization. Don't buy into it. You know, say, hey, give me some concrete examples. We'll deal with it. We'll take care of it. But in any regards, promotional opportunity, whatever it is in your system, 99% of the time, what we found out is that the more we fed into hysteria, which is the mob stuff, right? That the mob crap you see these days, the, the more the more it grew so um i hope that helps right and, and at wing spread we deal with really objective real problems we deal with stuff that's you know real you know what i mean objectively real and and that's the hallmark of those reports if you look at them there's nothing in there that was you know some wild fancy idea they're all very practical actionable things that we, that we went to work on and i think to, to the credit of the wing spread, then the, one of the last papers, Dennis, I think there was a, there was violence, right? Violence on first responders. Yep. And, first item. Yeah. And five years ago, that wasn't a big deal. You know, we were still kind of a well, sacred the, cow. The way, the way that I think you can validate that is probably two years later, NFPA developed standard 3000. So it, it really, that was a, a truly valuable uh, statement of significance that the group including yourself, of course, put forward. We put together what I would describe as an action plan or what's listed as an action plan in the background. And clearly it was one of those aha moments, just what you've described. And again, everybody in the room wasn't completely connected to it, but the vast majority was, starting with yeah. the commissioner of the city of New York, and Sal Cassano. Sal, and, and, and the neat thing about Winston, they just give it away. In, in other words, here, here's, go with it. No, nobody said, oh, we got to be on the committee at the NFPA, or we have to, that's my idea. You know, the minute somebody owns something, question them. 
what's the, what's the expression in the construction industry? A thief always marks their own tools first. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. Bobby, uh, I'd like to say thank you to, to yourself, to the fire engineering uh, group at all for allowing us to be here today. PJ, uh, thank you so much, Peter. Uh, we, we appreciate the opportunity. We're honored to be able to discuss wing spread and it's just fun to hang out with you guys. Well, you know, it, it's absolute, uh, you know, our pleasure and my pleasure to host this show every, every month. And, you know, we had a topic planned for today, uh, but we easily pushed that to next month because this is important to the fire service. Um, and everybody here has always been important to me as well. And before I turn it over to Chief Halton for the last words, I want to read some of Chief Halton's words from 2006. Um, this week, uh, as Chief Halton mentioned, we lost Leo Stapleton, uh, the commissioner. And in 2006, Chief Halton prevented um, Leo Stapleton with the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I just want to read a little blurb from Chief Halton's words from that day, because when we're talking about the fire service, um, those of us that have grown up in the fire service, Leo Stapleton is someone, um, especially being a New England guy, I'm very familiar with his work to the fire service. So I'd just like to read this, then we'll turn it over to Chief Fulton to end the show today. And this was uh, Chief Fulton's words in 2006. Leo Stapleton, Boston, Massachusetts Fire Commissioner, Chief of Department, was a recipient of this year's award. Stapleton began his fire service career as the firefighter of the Boston Fire Department in 1951. During his career, he rose to the ranks and was the fire commissioner, chief of the department from 1984 to 1991. There is no higher honor in Boston other than perhaps being a member of the 2004 World Championship Red Sox, which hurts as a Yankee fan, but I have to agree with Chief Vaughn. But for a Boston firefighter, however, it is everything to have your brothers and sisters call you a good Jake. I have the honor this morning, and I say honor with tremendous humility, to present the Fire Engineering 2006 Lifetime Achievement Award to Boston's own Jacob Jakes, Commissioner Retired Leo D. D. Stapleton. And there's much more to that that Chief Halton said that day. Um, but Chief uh, Stapleton, Leo Stapleton, passed away two days ago, and I felt it was very important to recognize him today and take that one little blurb uh, from that award ceremony, recognizing him in 2006 out. And just uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with uh, Commissioner uh, Stapleton today, go back, look him up look at some of his books. I think he has uh, 11 books published as well as many, many articles and thousands of, ach of achievements. And Chief Halton mentioned the uh, SCBA is one of the pioneers of SCBAs that was actually um, adopted by NASA's uh, SCBA program for, uh, for breathing air. Uh, amazing contributions to the fire service. Um, so I thank everybody for coming today and uh, Chief Halton, I'll give it off to you to uh, end the show today. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, please, please keep the Stapleton family and, and Trevor's uh, Henderhouse family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, they're going through tremendous loss. Um, you know, we, we knew we knew them as as coworkers and friends. Uh, they were dad and grandpa and brother and sister and um, a brother uh, and dad to those folks. And um both those men, uh, Leo and his long and incredible career affected so many people and Trevor in his short at life affected just as many. And, and so are you. And hope that, hope that uh, the Jacob Jakes is looking down on us right now and, and uh, with Trevor and saying, these knuckleheads, you know, keep going, you knuckleheads. Keep, uh, keep, doing, keep doing what you're doing. Be joyful, be kind. Um, take care of each other. And, and thank you both for, uh, and your families for sharing your lives with us. So until next time, this is uh, Fire Engineering's Hump Day Hangout. This was Politics and Tactics with Bruce Warner, Dennis Rubin, PJ Norwood, and some old guy with a Jay Leno costume uh, saying we love you and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.